Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now in the last episode I said I was going to introduce higher order functions and callables. And I introduced higher order functions but didn't quite get to callables. That episode ended up being slightly longer than I intended for it to be, and if somehow you are just now joining this channel, you may have noticed that I aim for five to 10 minutes for my episodes. I like to keep these as small bite-sized chunks that you can easily share with your coworkers if you would like to. So this is my example of a higher order function, something that takes two other functions and returns a function. It's a function that takes functions, returns functions. I am uh, now going to try to explain exactly what a callable is. The short answer is it is something that can be treated like a function. It can be called. So obviously a lambda is in that case. So I am passing in this or calling this calculate lambda. This is a lambda return from a function. I'm treating it as a function with these two parentheses here. I am passing these callable things, expensive calculation and even more expensive, as callables as well, and these are free functions. One of them takes a parameter, the other one does not. They both return integers. So lambdas, free functions, these are kind of obviously things that are callable. A few episodes ago in my bind front episodes, I discussed how well, anything that is a member function pointer is callable, and we've got many, many different overloads for those if we wanted to get all of that working with our own version of invoke, which we don't want to go back to our own version of invoke at the moment. But we've got lambdas, free functions, and member function pointers. So I guess I should probably review the syntax of how member function pointers are actually used. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to do two different things here. I'm going to create an integer and I'm going to create a getter for it. This is intentionally all public at the moment. I have an object of type S here. Now, at the moment, the value of i is undefined, and I'll just demonstrate this. If I put return s.i, then the compiler just generates this ret call. Well, what is this? What value is re returning from main? It has no way of knowing because we didn't initialize i. So let's just go ahead and use in-class initializer here and say that i is equal to 10. 10 is going to be returned from main. No big deal. We're making an object of type s. It has an i. It's equal to 10. We're returning it. Okay, member function pointer syntax. If you recall, it looks something like this. I have a function that returns an int. It takes an object of type s, no parameters, and it is const. This doesn't need to be in parentheses. So this is a const member function here. I am defining a member function pointer to a member function of the object of type s, and it is a const member function returns an integer. That's exactly what I wanted. So I am declaring my member function pointer, mem fun pointer here. And then we are stuck with how do I actually get a pointer to this thing? So we've got it here. We have a pointer to the member function of get i. Now, if I wanted to actually call this, I have my object of type s, and I can do this dot star syntax here, saying I want to call a member function pointer and it is one that takes zero parameters. I'm going to get rid of this return s.i. So that is, in a nutshell, our member function pointer syntax. Now we can also create a pointer to s. Uh, 
And in this case, if I want to invoke this on a member function pointer, I can't. This dot star doesn't work. That's for references and objects. So I have to do the arrow star. And there we go. I'm getting 10 returned again. I can, in fact, reassign my member function pointer. And now I can see I am returning 20 from main. That is, well, 10 plus 10. If I change the value here, then I will get 12 returned from main. All right, uh, this was basically already covered in previous episodes, and the point of this is things that are callables. These are things that can be treated like a function, basically. And these are all things that work with invoke and with any of the standard library functions like bind, bind front, that expect callable things. So a much simpler way of doing this is to use our standard library utility that was provided for us that already knows the syntax for calling these things. And that's what standard invoke does. So the thing that I wanted to get to, and the thing that Ben specifically brought up to me that has not ever been mentioned on the show before, is that member objects are also callables. So I'm going to go back to this code here, and I'm going to make this member object pointer, and I am going to assign this like this. Now, I am asking for a pointer to not a specific I, but just the general concept of the I element of an object of type S. Now, this is not a function, and it is not const. And now if I go back to my member object pointer here instead of member function pointer, then invoke does what I expect it to do. It returns the value 10. I am actually directly accessing this thing here. So let's just go ahead for the fun of it, make a second value called j, that is 13. Now at the moment, our mem object pointer is pointing to i. I can point it to a different member object of type integer, change the name here, and now I am returning 13 from main. And we've been using invoke the whole way around, so let's just be clear what the actual syntax is for this. It would be our object s. Like this. It is basically the exact same syntax as calling a function, but it's without, well, the function parentheses callable thing. And we can do it with a pointer just the same way. And always our standard library helper function invoke is there for us, and it has to cover all of these cases. If you noticed the pop-up on my bind front episode, I pointed out that I had even completely missed these cases myself and those examples. I think I covered basically all the different types of things that are callable, and I know I've mentioned this in previous episodes on lambdas, but just to be clear, this is also another way to make a callable thing, is simply to give it the, well, call operator overload. And to demonstrate what this looks like, one more time, I can call s and treat it itself as if it were a function, pass it in argc or something like this, and I'm going to get i plus j is 10 plus 13 is 23 plus k. k is edi, it's the first integer parameter to this function. argc is edi, that's just going to be carried through, so we get 13. 23 plus EDI, well, RDI, that's the 64-bit version of the DI register instead of EDI, the 32-bit version. This is using the load effective address opcode, which you can look into that instruction yourself later if you would like to. 
and the result is being stored in EIX, which is where the return value for main is expecting to come. So perhaps again, slightly off in the weeds for these episodes, but thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly.